I grew up in an arcade. I played video games. I put quarters on machines waiting my turn to eventually beat Street Fighter 2 or Mortal Kombat, Pole Position, Russian Attack, or various pinball machines. I've always wanted to own my own arcade machine, but thanks to 3D printing, now rather than buying one, I can print my own. And my buddy James here printed Ready Printer 1, a fully 3D printed arcade machine. Let's talk about how he did it, what it took, and how awesome it is, right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Uh, welcome back. I've got James here with Ready Printer One, a 3D printed arcade cabinet. Hey, James. How's it going, Joel? I am elated that this exists because I, I grew up in an arcade. I loved pumping quarters into those machines. You were the same, I bet. Mm, close. I kind of just missed it, but I really related to this stuff, so I've kind of chased it my entire life. <laughs> I love that it doesn't look like a normal arcade cabinet. I love that it has some customization to it. Yeah. And calling it Ready Printer One, what, what's the, I mean, where'd that come from? Uh, really, I saw, read the book Ready Player One, then watched the movie and got back into the arcade stuff kind of because of that. And I was like, you know what? I should build something and it should be inspired by that. Help us save the Oasis. So I wanted to be able to incorporate as much of that culture as possible. And the name just made sense to me. From the beginning, I mean, obviously, fully 3D printed. I would imagine you designed this in Fusion? It was Fusion 360, 100%, yep. How much time did you spend in Fusion 360? A uh, little over 100 hours. Yeah, through all the iterations, which, I mean, you were definitely part, or part of, close to 100 hours, I would say, if not a little over. Well, I remember you told me, and you showed me an initial design that had a very typical-looking JAMA-type cabinet, right? And then you, you switched it over to this, and then from there, what was the next step? Uh, well, the first step was, like you said, I designed a clone of a Galaga cabinet. I mocked it up one to one, and you and I started talking, and you were like, hey, this is really cool. Why don't you make it your own? So <laughs> I did. So the first iteration was kind of like a hybrid, where the base of it kind of looked the way it does now. The top of it kind of looked like an irregular arcade cabinet. And uh, I started thinking about stuff like, I want the screen to be able to rotate. So then I'm like, well, the amount of screen real estate, or this real estate around the screen required to make that happen if it's square is ridiculous. So all of a sudden this became a cylinder. Then from there I had like a neck off the top of it that held the marquee and I'm like, the marquee can fit however you want. And I'll be a lot of it boiled down to, it's 3D printing. It doesn't have to look like it's made out of wood. It can be any shape you want. And then I started running with that because I'm like, if I'm 3D printing it, I want people to know it's 3D printed. And it's definitely 3D printed. I mean, you can definitely tell it's 3D printed. Yeah, yeah. How much filament did you go through? Uh, about 22 kilograms. And uh, if we take a look okay. over here, 22 kilograms worth of material. You don't want to be running regular one kilogram spools. So IC3D sent me a couple of these 10 kilogram spools and the elation I feel in running a printer for a month straight on the same roll of filament, it's, there's, there's no topping it. It's like constantly not having to worry about am I out of filament, it's fantastic. So yeah, 10, 10 kilograms of two printers running 24 seven for almost three months. Well, I mean, I'm sure not full 24 seven. There were problems along the way. Uh, pretty much like any project like this, I had failures along the way. Uh, this part in particular right in the middle, uh, seven failures in seven days on two different printers. And uh, that, that's what happens. It's 3D printing. It's not perfect, but it is fun. Once the pieces were done, it had to be assembled. I see some screws. How much actual non-3D printed pieces are in this? Other than the screws, uh, the arcade cap, the parts themselves, like the buttons are all uh, Sanwa clones and the electronics, but other than that, um, oh, and the rollers for the screen. Um, they're the general V-slot you'd find on most like extrusion-based, uh, like aluminum extrusion-based printers. But other than that, it's all 3D printed. 3D Gloop was the other sponsor for the thing, so it's all held together with pins and 3D Gloop. So IC 3D filament, 3D Gloop to hold it together, and some elbow grease, and you have yourself an arcade machine. What are the guts? Uh, it's running on a Raspberry Pi, um, running RetroPie, the latest version, and that's pretty much it. It's an old 17-inch LCD, because I wanted to keep the four by three ratio that was traditional with arcades. I didn't want black borders or any of that stuff on the screen, so I stuck with what works. And uh, then lighting is done by uh, a 12 volt US, uh, LED strip. And the audio is a, an audio system for a boat. Yeah. A boat? Yep, 12 volt amplifier, uh, waterproof speakers, you know, just in case I want to play games in the pool. Well, let's be honest, back in the arcade, I remember they had drink holders and people put cups on print, on, on machines. And I mean, the arcade was wild west and you, you had to make sure that it was built against little kids, you know, hitting it harder than they should, right? Come on, jump. I did it. Uh, let's try something else. That is a concern. Uh, I don't know that this is going to be as durable long-term as one of those. 
Uh, cup holders were in one of the early designs. Uh, and then I realized I'm printing it out of PLA. Somebody's going to put hot coffee in there if it's at one of these events or something like that. And then I'm going to be sad. So. Well, and with a Raspberry Pi, if you're not running OctoPrint, you're running. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Raspberry Pis are basically for OctoPrint and Raspberry or RetroPi. So. Uh, for the, for the screen, anything special there? Um, it's just a like 12 year old LCD. I mean, I I obviously took it out of the case. Then there's rollers all the way around here that allows it to free spin so that it matches the orientation of the game you want and. That's pretty much it. Actually, that was one of the biggest failing points. I originally designed this to run with a 19-inch screen, and right before assembly, the 19-inch screen died, and I had like a week left to get it done. So redesigning, reprinting, got everything in. I, I think it turned out okay, though. I don't think it looks too much like it was designed for something too much bigger. I think it looks great how it's designed, and I would imagine, knowing you, this probably isn't its final form. No, it, it'll see a teardown before Earth. I'm hoping to motorize the screen rotation. Don't quote me on it, because. You never know. Uh, and I am going to go back to a 19-inch screen. It just wasn't here in time for me to get it done. OK. Well, I wish you the best of luck, James. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm going to have you hold my microphone, because i got to play Power Rangers. There you go. It's Morphin' Time! Yeah! Power Rangers!